All right, what's going on, everybody? This is the uh, season two, episode 46 of the uh, Smiley's Garden Tour. Um, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, we're just staring at the uh, veg table here, but got some things moved around and um, some things kind of pruned up and different stuff. Got some of the uh, new seedlings got transplanted and um, trying to get everything in row. Um, but yeah, as far as this weekend, man, I, I hope uh, everybody had a great one. We did. We, we got to uh, attend the uh, Country Roots Get Down, have a vendor booth there. Um, it was just a really a lot of, a lot of fun, uh, just seeing so many friends and having peers of mine come up to the booth and, uh, and try some of our flowers. Uh, yeah, beyond words, uh, the gratitude that I got for... The weekend and just uh, the time and love that everybody was kind of spending at our booth was uh, really awesome so shout out to all the people that did make it up and uh, and hung out and um, yeah had a good time I hope and all that so yeah I guess uh, this is the veg table there's really not a ton to say just kind of moving things around and uh, some of these are waiting to be transplanted all right, so this is probably gonna be a long-winded video. I got a lot to say on a lot of different stuff. Um, not that, I don't know, whatever. I hope uh, it's helpful for somebody or somewhere, but um, yeah, man, it's, it's been kind of busy. The uh, this, this first row here, I uh, was working on transplanting these and, uh, and noticed a new issue when I was kind of pulling out the root ball. Um, I ran into the, the roots just look like dreadlocks uh, here and I'm gonna cut away and then patch in a video that I did during transplant and come back yeah I'm breaking this video up a little bit but um, kind of doing some of the transplants here before I shoot the garden tour or I guess this will be added in the middle but these are uh, this is probably the worst set of the roots I've had. Um, but that's that uh, root knot nematode, and the worms seem to be really liking it. This pot's been chilling for a few days, so that root ball's kind of been drying out. I don't water these. Um, but yeah, this is uh, pretty gross. <laughs> and uh, pretty pretty eye-opening I guess um, realizing like the uh, the issues with the not issues but I guess it, the, the flower and the bud seemed to turn out okay I think um, probably yield was down there was some of that yellowing on the leaves and this kind of I think explains why but. All right, so yeah, that was just kind of a little clip. I, I got a few extra pictures I'll maybe tag in the, in the middle here too. But, uh, but yeah, the root knot nematodes um, obviously were affecting my last round. Uh, it doesn't seem to have really like affected the flower a ton. I mean, there's, there's a good, decent amount for the yield. Uh, not every pot had them. I would say half of them did. Uh, half of them did not although um, sure made me leery wanting to transplant into these but uh, doing some reading it sounds like you get some beneficial nematodes and uh, battle them that way um, it's probably not going to be too big of an issue so so yeah some of these got transplanted into a pot infected with uh, root knot nematodes um, what else was I going to say Oh, I did find them on roots in some of these that were getting transplanted too, so um, I'm not exactly sure how that happens unless it's in the uh, in the soil mix because I, I do get a bagged soil for my number one pot, so when, when the plants get cloned and they root and they come out of the clones, they go into a number one um, uh, easy swap pot and then I, I fill those typically with the uh, I had been using the nectar for the gods but lately I've been using the uh, potter's gold 
uh, which is a Michigan company, and um, so I don't know if something like that can travel in in the bag soil, and that might have been the kind of origins of it, or or if it was in a batch of compost or, or where. I'm not really trying to associate blame. I'm just that's one of the changes I noticed, and uh, and noticing it in the number one pot. It, it's just real peculiar to me how that would be on fresh, you know, the fresh bag soil and a newly rooted cutting. So anyway, maybe I'm, maybe there's more to these things than I know, but, but yeah, I got the triple attack nematodes coming. Uh, they should be here tomorrow. I will get those watered in. I still got to hook up the irrigation on this. Uh, I was in the middle of that, but I can do that while these videos kind of upload. Um, oh, as far as the uh, top dressing here on, on the, so I got, um, I ended up adding a half a cup of alfalfa, uh, a quarter cup of the, um, sorry, I'm trying to flip through my notes to find it here. Make sure I'm reading the right one. Yeah, it's a, it a quarter cup of the soy soybean meal, uh, two tablespoons of gypsum, and two tablespoons of potassium sulfate. And then I am watering in, um, seven tablespoons of iron sulfate and one teaspoon of manganese sulfate so kind of caught up on the copper on this round um but yeah so a little bit of uh rocky ground but we should be able to pop out of it pretty good hopefully so all right so this is the next round here in veg and uh these are all under led lights um cruising right along this row has been pretty happy i was doing um some IPM however and I had this one in the corner I got a number one sitting there on it which I got to finish the transplant but yeah as soon as that air because that that uh, sprayer is like a um, leaf blower or whatever but as soon as the air hit that thing and they'll bend them pretty good they'll dance around pretty good and be fine but this one just folded right over and when I looked um, it looked like uh, the isopods were chiseling away like a beaver at its stem and they had worked its something had worked its way through the stem so I'm gonna dig that root ball out too and see what's going on there uh, if there's more to it than just because it was just below where the mulch layer was so I'm assuming it was them isopods but, um, but yeah these are uh, cruising right along I guess there's not a ton to say about them it should be uh, rocking and rolling Alright, so this is the third round in veg here. Um, yeah, these plants are looking really nice. This is the round that was having the, some of the branches kind of popping off on them. Uh, same thing with that, that rough IPM. They, uh, they wanted to break off or bend off around. So, um, but yeah, these got moved. They got kind of pruned up. Um, really, they're just going to have the next two and a half, three weeks to uh, get taller here for flower. Um, everything's kind of on cruise control. I don't, I gotta grab the uh, soil test for these, get that sent out um, this week, and then uh, yeah, it should be ready to be top dressed and rock and roll in there too. Um, yeah. All right, so these are under the uh, LED bars here, the 680 watt. Um, they're on day five in flower. This is the first row here. These are um, high punch. So this is the keeper pheno of the high punch. There's four of them. They did get a, they're a little shorter than normal getting in here, but, um, but yeah, they're, they're cruising along and this is a super frosty one. Um, the uh, brother to this one was used for the uh, purple punch back cross that I got seeds for to run out yet too so um well they're already running out i got I actually got a back cross of the mail selected to do the bx2 of it this year so of the purple punch but these came out beautiful and you guys will see they'll uh really shine hopefully here in this round um i'm not sure the extent extent of all those uh root knot nematodes um, so yeah, I'm going to slowly kind of order in treatments and, and do all the rows and uh, hopefully get that done at transplant and switching into flower like 
So I'll treat the row that I just transplanted and treat this row and then next I'll do the, uh, the next row that gets harvested and the one going into flower. So I'll just kind of incorporate that. But uh, This next one here, these are uh, platinum cake. There's four of them in there. Um, kind of bushing out or starting to. I gotta move them and fill in these holes. Um, but these were kind of short, like I said. <laughs> they, uh, so they gotta stretch up a little bit. Um, this next two, these are blue lime pie, uh, which is a favorite of our patients and mine, a uh, long time favorite in the Major General, so that's the Team Blue Lime Pie. Uh, and then there are two rascal berries next to them, and there is a third rascal berries in that corner here on this last frog. Um, this one here is the Sky Stomper, which is one of Smiley's Angels. And what else is there? There's a Bicket OG, which I got actually got a little shorter one in there. So hopefully I can keep up with it. Um, what were these last ones? Got a blank. Oh, this is a uh, Formula 51, which is also a Smiley's Angel. And then that's a Rascal Berry as well. So, yeah, so that's the uh, first row there in flower. Um, I do got leaving this back here but I got some of the te new testers and down here uh, that are getting sexed and uh, some of the girls ready to go those are the sky high version 2 um, but yeah that's the first row all right so these are on day 25 uh, these are under LED bars the 680 watts as well um, this first one here is a uh, strawberry cough uh, which is a cut I got from a friend of mine and I'm very thankful for. Very loud strawberry terps on that. Uh, this one here is still kind of struggling. I think probably is going to be this way mostly through flower, but that's one of the purple punch back crosses. Um, this is the other purple punch back cross. That's the two different phenos of it. And then this one right here is the original purple punch so um, yeah the back cross is looking really similar it just carries a little bit more of a uh, floral note to the nose on it um, and I'm hoping the potency will be a little heavier so that's the uh, purple punch back cross stages of work um, this next one here these are uh, platinum cake and as you can see I got to get through here and do quite a bit of uh, pruning, kind of open these up a little, get them to breathe. Um, but the, yeah, this, this whole scrog is platinum cake. Uh, this is the cherry pie kush breath, which is from Gage Green Group. That's the third pheno. Um, and it's actually a really, really kind of a ideal one or a nice looking one. So it'll be a runner up for the keeper here. Um, at least at this point in the game. So it's kind of my number two. Uh, these two are the uh, Ghost OG, which is the uh, mom of the burn side. And you can kind of see how she stacks. Um, stacks a nice thick kind of cola here. Um, and, and I'll show you in this next row of the burn side that how it kind of resembles that. But, um, but yeah, this round's really nice of so the uh, Ghost OG. Um, so this one is the white cranberries, uh, standing in the center there. This is the uh, sis sister clone of the white cranberries that kept having the branches break off. I still have that one that broke. I gotta take that out of there. Um, there's, uh, and then these last two were the cherry poppers, which is from 808 Genetics. And, uh, yeah, this is a nice round of this cherry poppers. So I'm real happy. These are all stacked really, stacked really nice. Um, like I say, I'll get through here and clean them up a little bit this week and uh, kind of move from there. But um, yeah, that's the second row there in flower. All right, so these are day 47. Uh, this is this first scrog here. These are uh, burn side. So there's three of them in here. Um, these closest to this one kind of yellow, and I gotta check it. I don't know if that's getting kind of dry, but 
I guess they are getting into that time where they should start kind of yellowing out. Um, this next one here, these are the two that uh, bump into something, but these are the two that really, uh, you can see them how they stack like that Ghost of G Mom. Uh, and they really got that rank um, kind of fuel, diesel kind of smell. Um, to me, what I what I know as an OG, I guess, but uh, I guess there's a lot of different OGs and different opinions. But, um, but yeah, these these I'm really happy with. And this is actually probably the keeper that I kind of identifying right at the moment. It seems to be the frostiest. Um, this other one, if I can zoom in on, this is the other burn side. So this is the third vino there, but. You can see the uh, difference in the bud structure, which that's kind of what I've seen more out of that sky, cu sky cuddler side of it. So, and then while well, I got it zoomed, um, this corner one here, this is the cloud cuddler, so I'm going to zoom in a little more, which is the, uh, the Skywalker OG to the sky cuddler. Which is kind of the outcross for the Skywalker back cross that I'm going to do this uh, this year outdoor too. So yeah, just some showing off some of the uh, Smiley's Angels there and some of the breeding stock um, used for. It. Oops, still recording. I thought I bumped the camera there. All right, so these two are the uh, Cherry Pie Kush Breath. Um, this one here is probably not the keeper pheno. Um, I'm not really fond of how that bud structure is forming, but it may get a second run, it may not. Um, but this sister pheno here, you can see, has a lot nicer, kind of more of a egg shape to the, uh, or a pine cone shape to the, the bud. And that's a little more desirable, I guess, for me. Um, there's, these two here are the, uh, the Royal Kush by Cherry Pie. Uh, so this is kind of the, I guess the taller Fino, the Fino number four. Um, so shout out to Nick Risden. Uh, I got to see him this weekend too at the uh, get down. That was kind of cool when he made it out. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the tall Fino. And then down here is kind of this shorter Fino with like bigger bud structure there. I'm trying to shine across this row. But um, but yeah, those are the two Finos. Uh, I, I'm a little more fond of this taller one, um, a little more open bud, bud structure, a little more vigorous growth and, and whatnot. So it, it reminds me a lot more, I guess, in the growth wise, it reminds me of the Bicket a lot more. And this is actually Bicket's half sister or whatever. It's the same, same pollen donor, uh, different mom. but. Uh, this is the uh, ice cream cake, and there's just the one in there. Um, this is Hippie Goggles, which is also one of Smiley's Angels, and it's kind of one of my favorite ones so far. I, I don't mean that, I don't have favorites, they're all, all my favorites, but this one's been really shiny, and it's super, super frosty, and uh, has a really great flavor to it that I, I mean it's complex but I kind of call it that like pine to herbal kind of category or it's um, whoa, what am I doing here, zoom me, there we go, so yeah so that's been a real favorite with the patients, it's got a really nice high behind the eyes, um, these are uh, platinum cake, uh, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, this is a really nice round of it. Um, I gotta say I'm real hopeful to maybe have some of these to enter in some of the fall competitions. Because, yeah, you can see she's really beautiful. And uh, yeah, the rest of these are all um, platinum cake. So, so yeah, that's the uh, last row there in flower. And, um, and I hope... Uh, I don't think we're gonna have the uh, weed nerd world tonight like we usually do. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know if a lot of people know, and, and Eagle kind of keeps to himself on a lot of this, and we respect and love you for that, Eagle. But um, 
that a lot of friends want to want to know. But man, Ego got displaced from his home, and uh, and then had to move all his shit into storage unit, and uh, apparently that just recently got broken into too. So um, didn't sound like they got everything. He's not like without you know some of the basics, but uh, but definitely he's been kind of getting punched and kicked in the gut here by life and uh, I know a lot of people uh, that love love Eagle and hang out on the show just want to I mean even kind of give them a note of encouragement and uh, you know I, I, I don't know that it's something that we got to do a whole ton about you know I mean I know there was kind of a rant done on IG about empathy and uh, and you know we don't have to be and that's that's correct we don't we don't have to empathize with others and then it probably does uh probably does bring a little bit of health issue on you know but i guess i guess i would i i just look at it a little different and then you know i'm just talking off the cuff here but the way i see friendship and the way i see the way i've learned that from friends that have helped me through times in life man it's Empathy is what really makes us human, you know, and I, I don't know, I don't understand how somebody could have, how you could even say you love another human being if you can't have empathy. Um, I mean, that, that's really just part of it, right? Being able to share in their, their joy, their tears, their sorrow. I, I don't think empathy just applies to trauma, traumatic type things, but, you know, sometimes just being a friend is just sitting there and listening you know or just reaching out to say hey man we, we're thinking about you and we know if shit's tough and uh just want you to know we're thinking about you I mean, yeah i don't i don't understand how uh how the world can get so cold you know where, where we think that uh sharing in somebody else's sorrow is is somehow gonna harm us I and mean, I, I i really think that's you know, I'm, I'm no psychologist, but I, I really think that that's a big role in how serotonin and some of those other things are are released in our brain too that uh, counteract a lot of these cortisol and these other things. So maybe, you know, maybe having the ability to to engage with somebody in their trauma, traumatic situation, and and uh, sit and listen is might might put you a little bit at risk but maybe that's something that would elevate that other person you know so maybe maybe i'm willing to take a little bit of that load off them i don't know i don't know if that's how it works but in my head that's how it works right like we all need a friend to lean on at times i, I don't know so it's a shitty place this sometimes this world is you know i i recently got ripped off on a couple pounds you know, people are pieces of shit. They don't realize that we do this and we, we support patients with medicine. We, you know, the retail side isn't isn't there to fucking support a big $45,000 BMW or gold watches and shit. It's there to fucking help people have medicine that they need, you know? And I don't know. That's why I say I kind of was wandering through this video and had a lot of shit on my mind and shit to say, you know? And it's like... We deal with these things, and, and I'm grateful for the ability to do what I can do, but um, I don't know, sometimes it's just, we need to lean on friends, you know? And, uh, and this idea that being empathetic to somebody else is, is wrong, I think it's bullshit. And I'd call bullshit on it. I mean, I, I whatever. I think, uh, I think we need to, we need to kind of support each other. We need to grab it together, and we need to uh, lift each other up. And man, I hope if I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, shit can change from day to day. Like we think we get it figured out sometimes, and it's like, man, you can wake up tomorrow, and it's it's a whole different world. Something something that you thought was normal is gone, and you got a whole different world. So. You know, and I hope if that ever happened to me that, uh, that I'd have some friends that would be willing to kind of sit and listen to me too or whatever or join, you know, help me out in that. So that's why I'm willing to do it for other people. Um, and that's, that's what I think it's all about. So 
you know, shout out to Eagle Gardens, and uh, he's he's always been saying that, you know, random acts of kindness, and that dude's always doing random acts of kindness, so, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know what there is to really do in, in the situation, I just know my friend's, you know, kind of in, in the spot, and uh, maybe needs a little encouragement from some other people, too, so, but yeah, I hope, uh, you know, I hope maybe we can get a, a weed nerd world going tonight. Um, but man, I, I just don't see that being a thing without Eagle being able to make it happen. And, uh, and we all know that. And that's why we love Eagle, because he's been doing that for all of us. So, but man, I do appreciate all the people that follow along on these and listen to me babble. I appreciate all the people that support our seeds company and that have been... Uh, supporting us in these uh different events and the booths and um you know it just means a lot um so thank you and uh yeah i hope everybody has a great week and god bless What are you doing? What are you doing? They're done. They're done. You're making food. What are you making? I'm making food for you. Oh yeah, yummy! I can't wait. What's it gonna be? I'm gonna get fire. Fire? Oh, who's helping you make food? A guy is making some food. Who's making it? Okay.